All right, guys, um, it's Adam from Concordia University, Wisconsin's Occupational Therapy Program. And in this video, we're going to talk about minimal detectable change. So basically, I want to give a really short, brief definition of what minimal detectable change is. And that definition is basically the smallest value of a score that cannot be attributed to a measurement standard error. So to really understand minimal detectable change, we kind of have to understand standard error. So I'll give you guys um, a pretty good example of how we can go through standard error that makes sense and it's pretty simple and easy to follow. So to do this, we're going to give an example of standing on a bathroom scale. So let's say that in the morning I'm going to weigh myself three times on a bathroom scale. So when I step on the scale the first time, I weigh 165 pounds. So if you guys can see here, I'll put 165. So that was me stepping on the scale the first time. So let's say I step on the scale a second time and I weigh 167 pounds. All right, so no interventions have taken place there. I didn't do 100 jumping jacks or so between me stepping on the scale. You know, I didn't do anything different um, in that short amount of time. So on the third time, I step on the scale and I weigh 165 pounds again. So if you notice, one of those scores is 167 pounds, and that is a two pound difference, right? That is our standard error of measurement for this outcome measure or this bathroom scale. So when we use a tool, we can look at that tool standard error that can't be attributed to the intervention process at all. So for this bathroom scale, that standard error is two pounds. So no matter what happens, there's a two pound difference between anything ever actually happening. So we use this in minimal detectable change to say that I have to lose three pounds for anything to actually happen to say that it was due to an intervention. So I'm now on this weight loss program and I lost two pounds, but that's probably attributed to the two pound error associated with bathroom scale. Now, if I lose three pounds, we know we're outside of that standard error that was two pounds. So if I lose this three pounds, I can attribute that to the intervention taking place, which is my minimal detectable change, or MDC. So to give a better clinical example, we're going to talk about how this relates to like an upper extremity disorder. So let's say we have a client that walks into our clinic, and we want to give them the DASH, which is a pretty common assessment tool for upper extremity conditions. So we'll say that the client walks in and we give an initial baseline DASH score of 50. So from what we can learn from the DASH is that the lower the number on a DASH, the more functional that that patient is. So let's say the client walks in on the next day and we're going to give the DASH again to the client. And there's no intervention that has taken place. And we ask the client, do you feel any different today than you did yesterday? Has anything changed from today until yesterday? And they say, no, nothing has changed. So we give them the dash, and they score a 45. That's a five-point difference on the dash. And we know that no intervention took place, so that's our standard error of measurement for the dash. So that means that our minimal detectable change, which is the first number outside of the standard error, has to be six points. So let's say uh, we're treating this client and after four weeks of intervention, um, you know, we do some sort of modalities or just any kind of treatment, we give that patient the dash again. And this client scores a 40 overall, right? So we know that from their initial baseline at 50 and from where they're at four weeks later at 40, that that is a 10 point difference, right? So now that we can attribute that to the intervention actually taking place because we're outside of the five points of standard error for the dash and our minimal detectable change is six, so we know that the intervention has to be taking place at six points of difference, and we're at 10 points from baseline measurement to week four measurement, 
So we know that an intervention has taken place and that a change has happened. So that's minimal detectable change in a nutshell. If you have any further questions, you can refer to our handout that will be posted on the website. And Chris is going to talk further in depth about minimal, minimally clinically important difference in our next video. And after that video, we'll wrap up about how MDC and MCID are